And Congressman Torres, good to see you. Thanks for being here on Picks on Politics once again. It's an honor to be here. You know, Congressman, obviously we saw in those photos, you just recently visited San Juan, Puerto Rico, right, following the devastation left behind from Hurricane Fiona. So what did you see firsthand? What were you able to accomplish while you were there on the ground? Well, we saw the devastation from Hurricane Fiona, as well as some of the lingering devastation from the earthquakes and hurricanes that have ravaged the island. I spent the weekend in Puerto Rico. I met with the governor and FEMA. Um, and the most pressing need is the electric grid, mm -hmm. uh, which desperately needs to be rebuilt. Uh, the electric grid is so fragile that it can easily collapse under the weight of even a Category 1 hurricane. And it is a national scandal that in the wealthiest country in the world, more than 3 million American citizens in Puerto Rico have no electricity in the worst of times and have no reliable or affordable electricity, even in the best of times. Yeah. Uh, Puerto Ricans have received not one, not two, but seven electricity rate increases in the span of one year, which is unsustainable. If we had seven rate increases here in New York or in California or in Texas, there would be riots. There would be pitchforks everywhere on the streets. And if it's unacceptable here, it should be unacceptable on the island. So, but why is it acceptable, right? And especially because five years ago, Hurricane Maria, we knew there were issues with the power grid. And before Hurricane Maria, we knew there were issues with the power grid. So what is the issue here? And who is responsible holding their feet to the fire to get it fixed? Well, I think the, the federal government should make, more, make every effort to expedite the rebuilding of the grid. Um, we should play a much more hands-on role uh, because as a territorial government, Puerto Rico might lack the capacity to spend tens of billions of dollars without added capacity from the federal government. But there's a deeper issue. You know, Puerto Rico is neither a state nor an independent country. It is essentially a colony of the United States. Uh, and I believe deeply that Puerto Rico should be a, a state. You know, a wise person once said that if you don't have a seat at the table, then you're on the menu. Statehood would represent a, a seat at the table. Statehood would mean two U.S. Senators and five members of the House who are advocating 24-7 right. for the needs of the island. And the lack of representation is the core problem. Yeah, okay. and, and, and you know, I've listened to you say this before, right? Because you've said Puerto Rico often falls on the back burner, back burner because of that very issue, no representation in Congress. How do you change that, right? Are there efforts that you are putting forward to change it? Well, we do have legislation in Congress that would grant statehood to Puerto Rico or would allow Puerto Rico to have a binding referendum that would result in statehood. Um, I also have legislation that would expedite the elimination of the Financial Oversight Management Board, which has been part of the problem. You know, Puerto Rico's electric grid mm -hmm. has no diversification, has virtually no renewable energy. And Puerto Rico has been struggling to transition to clean energy because of the Financial Control Board, which has prevented Puerto Rico from bringing renewable energy from 2% to 20% mm -hmm. of its electricity. So, right, a more diversified electric grid would mean more resilience. Yeah. Uh, what, what lessons were learned briefly, because I want to move on to a different topic. What lessons was learned from Maria to Fiona to today? Or are they the same? Look, the, what's frustrating is it's been five years since Maria, and we're no closer to a reliable grid yeah. than we were in the immediate aftermath. So my view is the federal government cannot just simply allocate funding and then leave it to Puerto Rico to spend it. We have to play a more hands-on role in building the grid. Understood. Okay, thank you on that. I want to talk to you also because you represent the Bronx. And Mayor Eric Adams has received some mixed response right here from people in New York when he, made, uh, when he, when he opened these tent cities in the Bronx regarding the migrants and the asylum seekers, right, saying that it was necessary to have that because the infrastructure in New York just can't handle over 13,000 at once. What are your thoughts on these 10 cities right here? Both sides are right. Like, it, it is true that it's unacceptable that we're going to house migrants in tents, but, it's, but the mayor's right that the system is overwhelmed. Um, the mayor's response is unprecedented because the situation itself is unprecedented. And according to an analysis done by the New York Times, if, if the wave of migration continues to grow at the same trajectory for one year, the family shelter population is going to double. And so the capacity of our shelter system has been completely overwhelmed. The mayor struggling to handle the situation because he has gotten virtually no support from the federal government. Mm -hmm. FEMA should be providing emergency assistance that would enable New York City to absorb the massive wave of migration 
that has swept the city. So, so are you in favor of Orchard Beach being the location? Some folks were saying it may not be the appropriate location because it's smack in the middle of a park, because it floods, and because of the temperatures dropping. Look, I have concerns about it, um, but you know, it's easy to be a critic. No one's offering an alternative. And the fact is the mayor's capacity has been overwhelmed because he's receiving no support from the federal government. So you know, rather than critique, I, I want to do everything I can to be part of the solution and to play a role in securing federal funds. And that should be the priority of the New York City Congressional Delegation. Understood. So, so where does that stand right now, right? Getting that money, the necessary funds to help out with the situation, where does that stand? Look, the goal is when we pass an omnibus in, in the months to come toward the end of the year, that it should include funding to address uh, the migrant crisis that has disproportionately affected New York City. Understood. Can you do us a favor? Keep us posted on that, okay? Because um, cool. it's such an important issue. And Congressman Torres, if you hear anything from Puerto Rico as well, come back to us and let us know, okay? Because we're very interested in what's happening there. Will do. Good to have you, as always.